Essex, a helping hand with your land. Hi, I'm Brian Messick with Messick Farm Equipment. We're here to talk about the new New Holland Pro Belt Series round baler here today from New Holland. I have with me Garen Ingalls, the New Holland Dairy Livestock Specialist. And Garen, you're going to tell us a little bit about this baler, so let's just start in the front and uh, we'll work our way around it. Yes, thank you, Brian. So this is the new Pro Belt Series round baler. It's offered in a 450 and 460 model. So we'll start from the front of the baler and work our way back. As you can see here, we have our standard hitch pin assembly. We still kept the draw pin nice. keeper yep. here assembly so you don't have the hairpin dragging through the hay windrows. We move back here to the back of the, the hitch assembly. We have finite adjustment of for bolt right here so that you can adjust the hitch to multiple different draw bar heights on different tractors. Okay. And then when you move to here, we do have another adjustment in here where you can set the draw bar so the clavis so it's level with the tractor. Okay. So it sits, Good. so it doesn't have create a wear point on the draw bar. This baler is only offered in a thousand RPM. Okay. So it's not a 540 RPM baler. So no 540, yep. thousand speed only. Yep. Okay. And this baler is about uptime, no downtime. So what we've done here is we've also give you the the hitch, the hose holder and the harness holder. Okay. It keeps the hoses up out of the way of the three point hitches of the tractor where we mm -hmm. might have some problems where yep. it gets pinched and causes problems as well as it's a nice storage location when you're hooking for the baler. From there, let's talk about you, how many hoses we see here, Brian. So we only have two sets of hoses, which has me confused between the cutter and all the applications this does. What we've done here is we put a diverter swap valve on the baler. So a diverter swap valve, if you're familiar, like a big square baler, where you can control the functions of the baler from the cab of the tractor on the display monitor. Okay. So as over here, we have a nice decal that tells you what the hoses are. So black would be for the tailgate cycle. Okay. So these hoses run the tailgate up and down. The green hoses right here, the couplers, they run the default would be the pickup. So okay. when you start the tractor up and tell you four boot boots up, you raise and lower the pickup. But if you okay. want to lower the drop floor on until of you four, mm -hmm. you touch the drop floor icon on the display and, and then you can I lower the floor. Okay. And as well as if you want to raise and lower the knives, you touch the knife function. Oh, okay. Nice. So what this does is allows to run this baler on a tractor that has only two sets of remotes Instead as opposed of to having four sets of remotes. Okay. Okay. Excellent. And let's move back here to what we have, the cutout clutch. Okay. On the New Holland balers, you will not find a friction disc clutch. Why would we not want a friction disc? So if the friction disc clutches, all they are good in applications on a baler, what do they do? What do they create when they slip? Heat. And what, what don't you want around a baler that has some chaff on it? We definitely don't want heat around dry hay. That's right. The cutout clutch is simple, reliable, consistent, and no maintenance. I was looking here uh, on the pickup. We have here on the pickup, the rollers cut out, and I see there's something going on there at the side of the pickup. You're correct, Brian. So what we've done here is we've eliminated the pinch point by moving the roller wind guard this far in, and put in a straight time. So the bands here and the other pickup tines are the exact same part number as a roll belt baler, okay. but we could put this straight. And you know why we did that? No. How many times have you been baling on a corner or windblown wind rows and you get that slug of crop that kind of comes in oh. and then what's it do? Pinches on Pinches. the corner. And what's yep. it do then? Plugs up, plugs and, up. Yep. and then what did you wish you wouldn't have done? Plug the bail and send the slow. So isn't it better yep. just to kind of let it go yep. and then come back around and get it later yes. as opposed to spending, what, a half hour digging, digging out a bail sometimes? Yes. So once again, all about uptime, no downtime. So as we made our way over here to the side of the baler, I look up and the first thing I notice are these massive sprockets in this chain that is just enormous, Garen. That's correct, Brian. So what we've done here is we have put two sprockets on here, two drive sprockets to drive the rolls. So we're, we're driving the belts, belts. with two versus two. one that we've always had. Wow, Correct. okay. And these sprockets are 44% larger than, the, pre, than the, the roll belt series balers. We've done this for, for one main reason. It's about driving those belts in that heavy, wet silage condition, as well as taking the load off of one roll. Okay, I can see that, and that, that is an impressive size 
on those. So let's talk about the size. Why, what, what, does, what happens when you have a larger diameter anything in turning? What, what's it doing? Slows it down. It turns it slower. Yep. So by turning things slower, we're increasing the longevity of the life of the parts, parts. the baler. Yep. Yep. Um, more, it's all about more uptime, no downtime. Yep. As well as look at the chain contact we have on that baler there and those sprockets right there. Oh, it's wrapped around that front sprocket almost two-thirds of the way around it and even on the back sprocket. Correct. Yes. A lot of so contact. When you have a lot of contact with that sprocket, you're taking off the wear and tear of that chain. And as well as we're not bending that chain around a really tight angle, which mm -hmm. decreases the life of the chain. Yep. Let's talk about that chain right there. Okay. That's a diamond brand chain. All the chains on this baler are diamond brand chain. We see there's an oiling system on the front of the baler. We didn't, you didn't see that, but... Uh, there is an oiling system on this baler. It comes standard with the baler, and it works with every tailgate cycle, injecting oil onto the chains. So every time tailgate opens, it's going to inject some oil on the Correct. chains. Okay? Correct. For longevity, and that will definitely help out. As we made our way to the back of the baler, the first thing I noticed when we look inside, we are definitely missing some parts, Garen, that we're used to seeing back here. That's correct, Brian. As you can see, we do have the starter roll and the stationary roll. Okay. So what are yep. we missing? Missing the whole sledge frame assembly. The sledge frame is gone. You're correct. We did that for one major, major reason. Sledge frames have more moving parts. Okay. And you can have what with more moving parts. You more, have wear more wear. More wear and tear. More, more maintenance. More maintenance and right. That. Yes. Longevity of the baler yep. increases. As well as what we've we done here, Brian. I see you got some cutout slots and some scrapers in here. It looks like. Um, so you're correct. We put these standard on the baler, these scrapers right here, and these are adjustable. Okay. And this is a fixed one. So you can keep those rolls clean in that heavy, wet silage conditions. So that nasty, wet, muddy, correct. that will help clean that out. That's, that's very impressive. And as well as here, there's a knife, Brian, that, that cuts, oh, I see that. Yes. strips away the material as that rotor comes around. If anything wants to come over with it, it's going to strip it off so it doesn't back feed around. One thing I just Garen, is the belts. Belts are completely different than what we have on our other balers. Correct, Brian. So as you can see, these are wider, 11 inch wider belts. I see that. We got four of them, correct? Yep. So why do we do this? It's belt stability. Okay. There's less chance of twisting this belt during operation than it is with a narrower belt. Much wider, can't flip it over, yep. understand? Yep. And Makes if you sense. look at it, they're a thicker belt as well. Okay. Yep. Heavy, thick belts. We are still turning the bale with a floor roll, as you can see. Mm -hmm. And we still have the, the starter roll and a stationary roll, and that's still turning the bale as well. Okay. So we are still turning the bale with three different systems, mm -hmm. taking wear and tear off of the belts. Belts and things like that. Gotcha. Yep. The rolls up here inside just look massive. They have to be bigger than so, what yes. on the standard baler. Brian, they're about 70% they're about bigger in diameter than okay. the rigor roll belt series baler. So as we made our way around here to the right-hand side of the baler, a couple things I notice, Garen, I look at the bearings up here, and I, I look at the rolls here, and they, they seem to extend out past the bale chamber. The bearings are bigger on this baler. We talked about we did that because we have two twin drive yep. rolls up there, as well as bigger diameter rolls, bigger bearings. Gotcha. Yep. Makes sense. And then you're correct, the stripper spiral rolls right here, we still have those. Uh, but they do extend out past the side sheets of the baler. And we did that for one main reason. What's, uh, what would be the reason why are we doing that? As we strip the material off this roll, we want to get rid of it and expel it. We don't yep. want it to keep turning in the chamber because what happens oh. when it turns in the chamber? So we eliminate that chaff in the chamber. Gotcha. That yep. usually what? Climbs your belts? Climbs your belts and, and things like yep, that. Yep. Builds up. So we do have that here and up here. And for serviceability and maintenance, see those three bolts right yes. there? Basically, you can un unbolt that, unbolt the other side, and pull it out like a Pull that assembly out. Wow. So you can unbolt these, pull it out, work on it, put it back put in. Put it back in. And be, a, be up and bailing. Excellent. Garen, with chains on this side of the baler, it looks like we're driving this baler from both sides. That's correct, Brian. So what we're doing here is we have a split drive, twin drive gearbox right here. So we're taking power and we send it to the left-hand side, and we're taking power and we send it to the right-hand side of the baler. Okay. Over here, what are we driving, Brian? Looks like we're driving the pickup and the rotor on this side? Correct. That's right. Correct. Okay. On the other side, we're driving the rolls, the floor roll. And the belts, I'm assuming, up yep. top? Yep. Okay. Yep. 
Excellent. So it's all about taking the stress off the one side of the baler and have, instead of having to send it across down the right hand, left hand side of the baler and bring it over to the right hand side of the baler through the through the rolls, we're able to split it out there in the front of the baler. Yep. How do we control this baler from the cab of the tractor? Is there some type of monitor system or, or what, what are we doing here? Good question. This is an ISO bus baler. Okay. However, you do not have to have an ISO bus tractor to operate this baler. Okay. This is the ISO bus module right here. If you don't have an ISO bus tractor, you just plug into and watch it through the, watch the baler function through the, the uh, display monitor of the tractor. Or even if you want to have a second display in your tractor. Okay. So you have your tractor functions and you have your baler functions, you can do that. Gotcha. But we, let's get back to the older tractors that aren't ISO bus. Mm -hmm. You order the baler with an ISO bus monitor until of you four. Okay. And you mount the monitor in the tractor and you can control the baler with that monitor. So if I'm the customer, I would just purchase an IntelliView 4 monitor with this baler to run it on my older tractor that wouldn't be an ISO tractor. Correct. Okay. Simple enough. As you see here, we do have a moisture monitor on this baler as well. They are factory installed. You do have them on this baler right here. And it's pretty simple to tell. It's got the gray wire right here, which you can okay. tell it has a moisture monitor. Is that standard equipment? Moisture? It is not standard okay. equipment. Okay. It's factory installed, factory installed but installed you're up. stocking this baler with the okay the moisture. Gotcha. So this moisture monitor is New Holland's moisture monitor and it's very good wide range for doing dry crops okay. as well as silage crops. Okay. So the low on this is about is 7% moisture. Okay. And then the low. high side is 60% moisture. We'd be juicing water at that. Right. That's good. But we have okay. the flexibility and capability to do a wide range of crops with this baler right here. Good. So again, we're back over here on the side of the baler, and this baler is a crop cutter baler, so we know we have knives in the chamber, but we have a drop floor, which New Holland refers to as their active drop floor. Can you explain that to us a little bit here? Yeah, correct, Brian. So the way this works, the system works is, as crop does come in, and I don't care which baler, we know. Yep. Who does a perfect rake job all exactly. the time, right? Exactly, nobody. So if you do get a slug that comes through here, this ISO mount rubber, this black bushing right here will compress mm -hmm. up to okay. 10 millimeters. Okay. So we pull crop through under the rotor, up, up against the drop floor, and then what happens? Do we still keep that moving that crop? We're going to try, but then it's, yeah, it's, it's mounted it's gonna, to a cylinder. It's, it's, What's, how's that going to work? Yeah, it's going to be difficult. So that, that cylinder is actually mounted to a spring. Okay. So the cylinder will move down as well and let the crop flow through here. So that floor will actually push back a little push to let down. that slug work its way up through. Yeah. We actually, Impressive. As well as we have a sensor on this floor that will notify the operator if, they're, if they have a slug going through or if they're just pushing the bale a little hard. A little hard. Time. So they'll know that, that they, maybe they need to back off back a little off bit. I mean, anything. this bale is all about capacity, but everything has its limits, right? Understand. Yes, so, absolutely. And it is a drop floor as well still, so you can lower it from the tractor operation. Area. Get the slug out if we were to plug Correct. and then yep. move forward. So Excellent. Okay. Well, Garen, I want to thank you for coming from New Holland down to do this walk around on this brand new Pro Belt Series round baler. Um, again, if you have any questions on this baler, please don't hesitate to call us at 1-800-222-3373 or visit us at messix.com.